Here is an example of an audio file. Uh, just, just a sample file. There, this illustrates the, the analog data in the time domain. So on the horizontal axis is time. So this is just a plot of a signal. Think of our signals from our, some of our first lectures. We plot uh, the signal strength versus time. And in fact, we have two plots here. So we have time along this axis. It goes from zero seconds up to nine seconds. So it's nine seconds worth of audio. And the, the signal strength going up and down. We'll zoom in in a moment and we'll see it closer. This is an audio file which uses stereo. There are two channels, left and right. And stereo just means that think of two separate audio tracks. And that's shown here. How big is the file if we save it? So let's say we recorded this nine seconds of audio. How, big, how, are, you, how are you going to calculate the file size when you save it to disk? What do you need to know? So I think this is the original analog audio, analog data. How big's the file? Nine seconds of audio. Well, first you need to know what technique is used to encode the analog data into digital. So when we take the analog input, we save it as a file. Usually we select a file format which would imply the algorithm used to encode analog to digital, the codec. So when I save this, actually I export this in this case, and I can select the format here. There are different formats, and some of you would have heard of. If you cannot see, there's WAV, WAV, MP3, FLAC, AAC, AC3, WMA. These, I think, are uh, formats or, or more specifically codecs used for encoding analog audio into digital. So when you play back music, you're usually using MP3 or one of the other uh, uh, codecs. Well, we want to use a codec which uses PCM. And commonly, WAVE uses PCM. Not always, but it's common that when you save a file in WAVE format, WAV, the codec uses PCM, and it is the case in this one. And it says WAVE, Microsoft, because they uh, standardized this format, signed 16-bit PCM. So when I save that file, or in this case export it, I get a file on the, on the hard disk, and we'll look at the moment the size. So the the format of the file usually determines the codec used to encode that analog data into, into digital. This is using PCM. What else do we need to know? Well, when we save the file, it said 16-bit PCM, which means that there were 16 bits per sample. One sample is saved at a 16-bit value. With 16 bits, it means there's 2 to the power of 16 possible levels, or code numbers. About 65,000 levels in this case. The sampling rate, it's actually shown up here. The sampling rate, and, and it's common, we could have changed it, but the sampling rate in this case is 44,100. It's CD quality audio. So it's the same as a CD. 44,100 hertz. And it's in stereo, so we could calculate the file size. We did it yesterday for a CD. It's the same structure. It's, what do we have? We have nine, se nine seconds of audio. In this example. And the sampling rate of 44,100 
44,100 hertz, which means 44,100 samples per second. And a sample size, that is each sample is 16 bits. In other words, 2 to the power of 16 different levels. And it's in stereo. There are two, two tracks. So the, the data size in digital, well, we just calculate. We have in one second, we have nine seconds worth. In one second, we have 44,100 samples. It's a four. So in one second, we have 44,100 samples. Each sample is 16 bits, and we have nine seconds worth. So that will tell us the number of bits for one track of audio. For nine seconds, this would give us the number of bits. But in fact, we have two tracks. We have left and right for stereo. So in fact, we multiply by two. Because each track, we must save those bits on the hard disk. So that's the total number of bits to represent this, this audio, which is, you'll get out your calculator, nine times 44,100 times 16 times 2. That's the number of bits. And usually when we save, save on a disk, we use bytes. So let's just convert to bytes. So 1,587,600 bytes. So that's the amount of data we need to save on the disk. So we expect the file size to be at least that size. So when we save it in a WAV file, the file size should be around this. Let's check. We'll come back to that number. Uh, where is it? I have it somewhere. The file size is 1,589,228 bytes, so the WAV file. 1589. We calculated the data is 1587, so the file is slightly larger than this because the file, the WAV file, includes the data plus a few extra things to, to keep track of what type of data is inside here. So the, the format of um, what the data is. Think of it as like a header, some overhead to store there. So it's about 1.5 megabytes. What if I export it to a different file type or are using a different codec? That was using WAVE, which uses PCM. I haven't tried this, we'll see if it works. MP3. Save it as an MP3 file. And let's look at the size of the MP3. One hundred and forty five thousand bytes. The WAV file using PCM was one point five megabytes. The MP three is about one tenth of the size. So the same original analog 
audio, same original data, but we used a different codec. With WAV, we used the PCM codec, the one that we've studied. But in the second case, with MP3, it uses a different algorithm for converting the analog into digital. And in this case, it uses an algorithm such that the file size, the amount of data saved, is much less. And that's the advantage of MP3. Same nine seconds of audio, but a smaller file to store it on disk. And much more easier to, to, to store many, uh, a large amount of audio, and also to transfer. So what's the difference? It's smaller. What's the problem with MP3? How does it get it smaller? With PCM, we took samples and mapped each sample to 16 bits. With MP3, it's more complex, and I don't even remember the details of the algorithm. Uh, but there's two things. To reduce the file size, we can reduce the quality. So less samples and less bits per sample reduces the, the quality. So generally, a smaller file size, a smaller quality. But it's not always true. What MP3 and other algorithms or other codecs do is that they, they look at the structure of the audio and they, MP3 even removes some parts of the audio. So some of the frequencies which, which do not contribute much to the quality of the audio, it discards them. It throws them away. So when you play back the MP3 file, you don't hear exactly the same as the original. Or well, you don't hear exactly the same as the WAV file because the MP3 codec discards some of the information. Why? Because it makes the file size smaller. That's a good thing. The problem is that the quality goes down a little bit. But in many cases, your human ear will not be able to detect the differences. Okay, so that's the advantage of the MP3. It Basically, it compresses the data. So it compresses the data and discards some what it thinks is not useful data so that uh, the, the file is small, but the quality may be less. So different codecs will produce different file sizes and will have an impact really on the quality. One last one. Uh, where are we? If we save it as one more, export to... Actually, I've done it before. I've also got in another format of FLAC. FLAC is another, uses another codec. And the file size is about half of the original wave, the PCM encoded. So it's 770,000 bytes. The original was 1.5 megabytes. MB3, 145 kilobytes. FLAC, 772 kilobytes. So FLAC is in the middle. It's bigger than MP3, but smaller than the original PCM coded wave. FLAC is just uses a different algorithm. And the key part of FLAC and other similar algorithms is that it, it doesn't discard any of the audio. MP3 throws away some of the audio, so when you play it back compared to the WAV file, it will not be the same. But FLAC, is what's called a lossless codec in that it compresses the audio, it compresses the, the, the wave file effectively, but it doesn't discard any of the audio. So when you play it back, you'll get exactly the same audio as when you play back the wave file. Okay, so FLAC is what's called a lossless codec. No information is lost. It's just compressed. The same as you have a large text file, you compress it using zip, when you decompress it, you get the original text back. Nothing is lost. That's the same as FLAC. But with MP3, if you had a large text file and you compressed it with MP3 and you decompress, you wouldn't get the original text back, which is not so good for text files, but for audio, it is OK because our ears may not detect the differences. So many different codecs have trade-offs in terms of file size, mainly the quality of the reproduction and also sometimes the time it takes to, to encode and decode, to compress and, and decompress, as well as the support of those codecs on different 
uh, in different pieces of software and in different pieces of hardware. Any questions to finish on, on PCM? We're not going to talk about the other codecs. Ours is just about PCM, but you, I think you've used many other codecs. Any questions before we finish this topic? It's harder to, to demonstrate and sometimes to think about, but the same, same applies for video and other sources of analog data. Video, audio, uh, data recorded from some, some sensor that records temperature, for example, that data, all analog data, we can apply a codec to convert it into digital. There's a few slides here that we didn't really use, but they just summarize the steps used for PCM. So really, if you can follow the examples we went through yesterday, then that's all you need to understand about PCM. Uh, this just describes the steps that we used. This was the sampling theorem. We should sample at two times the highest frequency component of the original input data. There are variations of PCM using what's called nonlinear coding. In our case, we divided the space into uh, equal sized uh, bands, in this case, from 0 up to 16. Each uh, row was the equal size. That's a linear coding. But you can do other things like make it nonlinear, that is, almost like a logarithmic scale. It, here we have smaller bands, so, and uh, as we get to the, the, the larger amplitudes, we get larger bands here. But that's what we will not cover, nonlinear coding. And there's other mod modifications. Delta modulation modifies PCM. We will not cover that. There's a couple of slides there. So PCM, think, is the basic codec used for audio. But there are many other codecs that try to improve upon the efficiency, like compress the data more. PCM doesn't compress anything. And also maybe sacrifice some quality, like MP3 does, to, to reduce the file size. So that brings us to the end, because the other topic we've covered before the midterm on the, in this signal encoding techniques.